So people are going to want to know, have you ever played D&D? Yeah. Were you actually any good at it? No. Lost, lost horribly. Died in the first 10 minutes. Shouldn't have opened that door, man. <laughs> Gary Gargax was one half of the team that resulted in the creation of Dungeons & Dragons. A sentence that probably conjures up a very specific image in your head of what Gygax was like. Be prepared though to throw that image out of the window and spike it to the curb, because Gygax was actually a total pimp in the 1980s. So tell me when this tale of pimpness begins. It begins in the 1980s when Gygax was ousted from his company's TSR Inc. under the pretense of going to Hollywood and seeking out, like, you know, someone who can make a Dungeons and Dragons movie. However, behind the scenes, the real reason he was like, you know, forced out of the company and told to like, you know, fuck off to Hollywood was because of his hard partying lifestyle, which involved <laughs> taking drugs, drinking hard liquor at all times of the day, a hey, a kindred spirit, and sleeping with random women while married. But I need to point out, yes, we are still talking about the same guy who invented Dungeons and Dragons, a man who looks like an amalgamation of every uncle in the world. <laughs> So was, was Gygax always like this? Actually, no. He was a fairly laid-back dude who was in a, I know, a happy, committed relationship. And he just so happened to have an unhealthy obsession with wargaming. To such an extent that his wife once thought he was having an affair and burst into a room expecting to find him with a woman. It turned out he was, like, huddled around a table with a few friends playing war games. Which is, like, you know, exactly what you'd expect the, like, the inventor of Dungeons & Dragons to be caught doing at some point in his life. But after Dungeons & Dragons became like, you know, like a worldwide phenomenon and he became a millionaire, he's like, you know what, fuck this, and just started taking drugs, drinking during the day, and sleeping with everything that moved. I should also point out as well that while he was doing this, um, he was still technically a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> Something that, like, you know, understandably made the members of his church a bit uneasy. Especially considering that in the 1980s, Dungeons & Dragons was in the news quite a lot. And do you remember what for, Brad? This is something to do with Satan. Yeah, a lot of people thought, like, you know, promoted, like, you know, it had either satanic imagery in it or promoted that idea. So, just to be clear, while Gary Gygax was, like, you know, attending church, he was doing so while drinking, fucking, smoking, and simultaneously profiting from a game that some members of his church actually believed enhanced the devil's own powers. How fucking metal is that? We sound like we're talking about Lemmy, not the guy who invented Dungeons and fucking Dragons. Like, I cannot understate, like, how much of a square this guy was up until he got infinite money. Greetings, it's a pleasure to meet you. So I'm gonna guess that his wife was not very happy with this. Of course she wasn't, no, and the two uh, divorced around 1983, which coincided with when Guy Gack was ousted from his company and decided to move to Hollywood. But now obviously with nothing holding him back, like, you know, no wife, no company to tell him what to do. Um, what do you think Guy Gax did with his you know, millions of Dungeons and Dragons dollars? Did he party more? Oh yeah. Not just party more. He partied all of it. He did all the party. He became like party wolf from like Adventure Time. Like he rented a ginormous fucking mansion overlooking like you know Hollywood and just held giant cocaine fueled orgies and all day parties in it with supermodels while also playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> None of this is hyperbole. Like this this guy, wherever you put the picture of him, was out there in the 1980s, you know, like doing lines and shagging nines and didn't give a fuck about it. <laughs> Holy fuck. So it's always like you can't like, we shouldn't like you know uh, like idolise or you know romanticize that lifestyle but if we were talking about a rock star, so of course that's what a rock star was doing. It's like, of course that was like Lemmy, that's what he was doing in the 1980s. Of course it was like the Rolling Stones with David Bowie, any of those people. But when you say like the creator of Dungeons and Dragons, it's like, no, you're lying. It's like, no, no, like the creator of Dungeons and Dragons partied harder than most rock stars did. Very much like, he looked like this. That's what money does, folks. The ultimate aphrodisiac. <laughs> So is there any more to this story? It sounds like he did an awful lot in that short space of time. Yeah, I'm presuming you missed the word like women. I like, did an awful lot of women during this short space of time. Because in addition to that, obviously he played Dungeons and Dragons. He hobnobbed with celebrities like Orson fucking Wells, who turn up to these parties. And then when he was bored, he cruised around LA in a Cadillac being driven by whatever supermodel he happened to be dating at the time. Because, and this is fucking true, he never learned to drive. So he'd get the supermodel to drive him wherever he wanted to go. So he wanted to go to McDonald's. He'd get a supermodel to drive him to McDonald's in a Cadillac, get it, and then drive back home and sleep with said supermodel. 
God, it sounds like he was just rolling natural 20s for like three or four years straight. Oh, he fucking was, wasn't he? Like, I'm just imagining now, though, right, to apply D&D rules to life, in specific, like, you know, the life he was leading at the moment, what would be, like, you know, a critical fail, like a one, like, during sex? Because like, that's what he was doing every day. Like, I'm just imagining now, like, you just, like, your dick just falls off. No, like, you'd, just... you'd snap your dick in half on the oh, perineum, no. wouldn't you? Oh, God. Imagine, like, what, folks at home, like, in the comment section below, what would be a critical fail during sex? So I think it'd be like doing a postman and delivering in the wrong box. <laughs> so that'd have to be, because that would uh, immediately end the mood. Then you do a recovery roll and roll a natural 20, and she's like, I like that. That's not bad, that's not bad. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't ask first, but you know what? It is your birthday, is it? Oh, fuck, it is. <laughs> so that's what it's like Domino's power, in it? It's like rolling natural 20s all the time. It's like, oh, yeah, I turned up in Hollywood. I've been divorced. My company's ousted me. Oh, no, wait, I'm a millionaire. Fuck it, we're going to hang out with Orson Welles and bang supermodels all the time, <laughs> and then play Dungeons and Dragons with my mates. So, yeah. The next time you think about dismissing Dungeons and Dragons as a game for nerds, remember that the co-creator of the game once spent several years being driven to parties to sleep with supermodels by supermodels he was already sleeping with. Fuck yeah. <laughs> that man is my hero. I mean, if you've played D&D, you must have read some of the stories that come out of D&D. There's so much bullshit you can do in Dungeons and Dragons. If people out there are not familiar with what we're talking about, just go Google, like, you know, D and D stories about things going wrong, things going right, because the game mechanics can be abused in so many hilarious ways. Like many of which we've already discussed, that will then be edited into this bit later. Right, you know, let's pull back that curtain because I've already drunk too much rum to like, you know continue talking about it for too much longer. Yeah, we, we, the bit that you're about to see was like ten minutes ago, and we just went on a ten minutes. As evidence by the fact my face is now redder in this bit than it will be in the bit after this. But I you've got a drink for Gary Gygax, man. Like. How much of a fucking party animal does this guy sound like? It does. Like, if I would have told this entire story and not mentioned what the guy did, you'd have seen like what was he like? Film star? Like was he a musician? It's like no, no, he invented Dungeons and Dragons. It just doesn't sound right, does it? And I'm glad that there's someone out there booking that fucking stereotype for nerds. There's a guy out there getting mad laid for all the nerds. Like ripping peace, Gary Gygax. I love the idea of, uh, like, I love in role plays when crit fails are, like, super bad. Oh, yeah. I love the idea of that in life. I've like... seen, like, a lot of the, the memes about it, yeah. of, like, um, or, like, oh, you reach out to touch the orc's back, you roll a critical fail, you, you caress it gently, the orc likes it, and stuff like that. Or, like, you get the critical, like, you roll the natural 20 for, like, the, uh, the perception check of the tree. It's like, is that tree always been here? I roll a natural 20. <laughs> it's like, yes, I have. Well, the tree would know better than us. <laughs> This is the famous one of Sir Barrington oh, as well. Sir, tell the story of Sir Barrington for the people at home. Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, Do you know the full story? Yes. I only know the gist of it. So yes. do, do you want to... All I remember is, uh, obviously, there's a, a guy who decided to play a bear, and he was, was his charisma or his bluff? Yeah. Um, it's, I, th I don't fully understand, like, D&D terminology, but my interpretation of it is he... A guy was playing Dungeons and Dragons and played as a bear, but he put all his stats into, like, bluffing yeah. and charisma and convinced everyone that he was, like, a human called Sir Barrington. And all of his... Fr like, the, the dungeon master hated it, but all of his mates like, no, he's fucking brilliant. Sir Barrington all the way. And the story ends with the guy going, like, the first time that like, someone managed to, like, you know, get past his, like, his bluff check or his bluff roll, and the guy's like... Wait, you're a bear. But then he rolls a natural 20 on the bluff and he's like, no, I am. And the guy gets taken away in chase. And like the <laughs> For king being of, insane. And the, guy Apollo, the king Apollo to Sir Barrington, who just growls thanks. Oh, well, it's like the peasant railgun, isn't it? Have you ever heard about that? No. Right, so I don't fully, again, the mechanics of it, but the idea is that I think passing an object um, is something you can do without taking up a turn. Yeah. So if you get a long enough like, you know, line of peasants and then pass them like a broom handle, because it requires only one turn, if you get a long enough like, line of them, they'll pass it all the way to the end. And by the time it reaches the end of a line of peasants, because obviously it gets exponentially quicker the amount of time, because obviously if you've got a thousand peasants, you have to pass it a thousand times in one turn. Like the end of the turn, like the, the broom handle is traveling at the speed of light and can one hit kill any enemy in the game. <laughs> it's called like the peasant rail gun. The one I always remember existed in the, uh, it was a Game of Thrones adaptation of a, like the original uh, D20 D&D. &D. Yes. But it might be in D&D. &D. It's called Greater Cleave. And the, what it is, is if you hit a successful roll on a cleave, you can then automatically get a free attack against an adjacent enemy. Yes. And it continues. So the idea is if you lined up everybody in the country in one line... You could do it. Yeah, if you always kept rolling hits, you would be able to kill everybody in six seconds. You could just murder the entire world in you six just, seconds. You just do an Anakin and just like... Just Jedi force your way through.
The thing is, I love all that shit though, like the exploitation of game mechanics. Like, um, I don't know what game it is, but have you ever heard about the guy? I think it was, a, it was an MO, like an MMO, and the guy ruined it with slimes. I don't know which one it is, you can look it up and you can put below which game it was, but it was like in this game, slimes could, like anything, any object could stack infinitely on one stack, and slimes, when you take took less damage than would kill them, would multiply. So one guy put a slime in his house and then kept throwing like a mana bomb onto it, which did like one damage and they cause it multiply and then did it over and over and over and over and over and over until basically there were like a billion slimes in his house and opened the door and it crashed the entire fucking world. I think uh, the most famous one of that was the um, boss in World of Warcraft where they put an ability on him, which would be... Um, the Blood Scourge. Yeah, it was like a poison that would kill you if you don't get healed. Yeah, I've wrote an article yeah. for today I found out about, which oh, is, it was the plague that nearly wiped yeah. out World of Warcraft. So if you de-summon the pet and then re-summon it in a public area, it, it, it still yeah, has the It becomes off. a plague bomb. Yeah. And people would... Uh, and it became a actual thing bioterrorism experts have studied, because the reaction of people in the world mirrors real-life parallels, because healers would going into the quarantine zone to heal people and low level players would stand outside warning people not to go in whereas high level players who could take the damage would go in to explore to see what was going on but what i like if you ever heard of the thing in ashron's call where um, in that game enemies could level up and the final like like boss of the world was like his crystal and what it was is like um, when you defeated that crystal like the next stage of the game would start and a bunch of high level players think, you know what i don't want this game to end so these high level players committed suicide on the crystal to level it up and they ended up calling it harry <laughs> and what they did is they committed suicide on harry over and over and over again until it became so powerful that it was apparently able to resist command level inputs to like power down and what mods in the game did is they went into like you know the world itself as like ultra high level powered heroes with like mythical equipment and got their ass stomped by Harry because one of their own members had like, you know, um, betrayed them and joined to become a disciple of Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Video games are so dumb and I love them.